Welcome back. Welcome back as we dive further into the truths of my Starforged campaign, my world that I am starting. I'm having an absolute blast digging through these truths. We busted through the Cataclysm, Exodus, Communities, Iron, Laws, Religion, Magic, Communication and Data, Medicine, and Artificial Intelligence last time. We only have four more truths left. And then, according to the way the book is going, and I'm going to try and follow the book to the T, the preview edition that you can grab on Kickstarter if you back if you back this awesome project. Um, even at the lowest tier, you get access to the preview edition, which I'm going to tell you right now, it's 240 pages of awesome and practically the entire book. It's only missing a few pieces. Um, I think the NPCs and something else. But... It even gives you some sample NPCs in there. So it has everything you need to start. So absolutely worth getting into. Uh, Sean Tompkin uh, and his his son, amazing creators, and everybody else who's on the project, amazing creators. Uh, so let's uh, let's dig into it. Yeah, we just had done with artificial intelligence. We know we're going to be able to get a Jarvis. Um, it's going to be hard for me not to take that overseer module as my as my third asset, um, as my third free asset outside the ship. So yeah, fuck man, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough not to do that. Um, leave leave the quest board up. Quest board stays up. So we're we're moving into the next one. We're doing war. Let's find out what war's like. Again, no music. I am playing the Crying Sons, uh, Crying Sons background music. That's that is how I'm starting my campaign. Um, we'll see where we go. We might go. We might just go straight into Star Wars music. Who knows? That's good shit. Um, roll Oracle. What a, what's war like? 24, we rolled low. Here in the forge, resources are too precious to support organized fighting forces or advanced weaponry. Oh, I kind of want to veto this. I kind of want to veto this one. I don't even want to I don't even want to dig into it because it doesn't fit in my head. Let's let's dig into it. Let's dig into it. I've had others where I'm just the reason it doesn't fit is because the religion one is three dominant religious orders, the triumphant battle for influence and power within the forge. And though it may be true with a low war system for them to still battle for supremacy, it's on, it's on such a lower scale that I feel like it's a, it's almost a bummer for me, but well, let's, let's see, because I've been, I've been thwarted before um by re by reading more let's read let's read the rest of it and see if it fits weapons are simple and cheap starships are often cobbled together from salvage most communities rely on ragtag bands of poorly equipped conscript uh, uh conscripts or volunteers to defend their holdings and raiders prowl the forge in search of easy prey and then the quest starter is on a remote jungle world settlers harvest a rare medicinal plant once a year raiders come to claim a sizable portion of the crop this year the harvest was meager and they cannot bear the cost with the raiders due to arrive in a matter of days what will you do to protect the people of this outpost hmm um the, the biggest thing is i think it assumes that you you still have your starship you still have it it's it, it, it does make your starship a little more special. It makes you a little more special because you have a starship that isn't sort of cobbled together, a weapon of war when there aren't many weapons of war out there, and it puts some emphasis on it. Even digging into it, I don't know if I feel like it's right for the thing I'm thinking of. I think for a different campaign, if different truths may have been rolled, this would have worked. But I think I will get one veto in my truths. I think I will get one veto because I'm not, even after reading it all, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling I don't want my ship to be that important, I guess. So what's what are the other two like? Let's just read those out really quick. Let's dig into the war truth and see. So those few with the ability to pay can call on the Legion, a guild of professional soldiers to defend or expand their holdings. The rest of us are on our own. Now, that one's that one's pretty cool. And then the second, the third one is War Never Ends. Talented weaponsmiths and shipwrights craft deadly, high-tech tools of destruction. Dominant factions wield mighty fleets and battle-hardened troops. That one fits too. Both of these fit. But I, I, I kind of want a 50-50 between these. This one just wasn't, the first one just wasn't fitting mine. So we're still going to roll to see which of these is true because I think they both are interesting options again you can see the way these truths go it's like little war medium war big war they, they grow so the higher you roll the more the more of a thing is happening and yeah this religion triumphant role needs either that that those those last two at least in my head they do 
Um, I'm sure you could definitely make a very interesting, like, they battle more wars of influence, um, of, like, protection from raiders in some ways. You could definitely do that. I think that's just not, not what I'm feeling. So let's let's do a roll between these two. Um, lower half is going to be here. So a 1 to 50, I believe it is. A 1 to 50. And then 51 to 100 is going to be the rest. Um, which should, uh, yeah, that should be that should be a perfect split. Uh, so that'll be, yeah, 51 to 100 will be the War Never Ends. Um, so let's see what we get. Okay, we're going with the lower. I think that that fit a little bit better for me, too. The War Never Ends was was a little, I like it. It works, but it's extreme. Um, I'm into it. Those few with the ability to pay can call on the Legion. Um, a guild of professional soldiers to defend or expand their holdings. The rest of us are on our own. Uh, I like it. I like that the Legion is a thing. It adds a new faction. We have the Triumphant. We have the Legion. You know, we have this old religious order. We don't really know what that that thing's called. We might have to get into that later. Um, did we we rolled religion, right? Yeah, it's triumphant. That's a, that was that was the religion. What am I talking about? That is religion. Um, we don't know what the old ancient religion was called, though. Maybe that'll be whatever the precursor is. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, anyway, the Legion deploy skilled fighting forces and well equipped starships on demand, but their service always comes at a dire cost. And the members of the Legion are mercenaries who hold no loyalty except to the highest bidder. I like this. I like the idea that the triumphant is constantly paying the legion and the legion like to like fight others and the legion's just benefiting just benefiting off this triumph that just going around a circle i honestly feel like this one out of all of them fits the most with triumphant and religion so I'm, I'm into it um and the quest starter a detachment of the legion was sent to put down a rebellion on a mining settlement instead of following their orders the soldiers now stand with the miners what force this sudden reversal? What will you do to aid these renegades as the full force of the former cohorts are arrayed against them? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What happens? A detachment of the Legion was sent down to put a rebellion, put down a rebellion. Instead of following their orders, the soldiers now stand with the miners. What force this sudden reversal? This last question stumbles me. What will you do to aid these renegades as the full force of their former cohorts cohorts are arrayed against them? Is it assuming that even though the Legion turned, that the full force of their former cohorts are arrayed against them? I'm confused still. I'm aiding these renegades. A detachment of the Legion was sent down to put down a rebellion. The, the, the rebellion is... Would they need aid, though? In my head, the Legion is enough to, like, um, defend. I was expecting the last question to be, like, you are now paid to, like, deal with the Legion or something. What will you do to aid these renegades as the full force of their former cohorts are arrayed against them? I guess their former cohorts still have power. Um even without the Legion. Maybe they're just paying the Legion in that moment. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about that quest. Mostly because I don't fully understand it. Uh-oh. I, uh, I highlighted everything. There we go. Didn't want to do that. Cool feature, though. Copy. Um, let's pop it in here. ka -chow. And then this guy is going to be like this. And... Let's grab that quest. Even though I'm not like the most about it. Seems interesting. I think I can understand what they're trying to do. I don't know if it was worded in a way that I could best understand, but all good. All good. Um and save. All right, we have war. I like the legion in general though. The legion in general is something that just works perfectly. I imagine them as corrupt, though. I definitely imagine them as using the triumvent like against itself. Maybe they even keep that war going. Like in any sign of peace, they're like finding ways to make sure the war, the war between the three religious factions, continue. Oh, I'm so into that. We have to like definitely make names for that religious fact. Those religious factions, 100. Okay, with war out of the way, life forms is next. This, oh, 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 war is not quite out of the way. War is not quite out of the way. Have you fought in any wars? Absolutely. Absolutely, this character has. Uh, are there any experiences which haunt you now? 
100%. That is literally something that defines this character in my head. If you are an experienced soldier, you might be a veteran. Ooh, big time. Big time. That could definitely be true. That could definitely be true. Let's, uh, let's get that bad boy in there. That fits. If you swear vows as a soldier of fortune, you might be a mercenary. Also could be true. Also could be true. There's so many choices. If you favor a particular weapon, you might follow a path such as a blade master, gunner, gunslinger, or sniper. I hate I hate that all of these are true because I don't have this many choices available to me. Oh my god, this one really harkens to that character. See, the best thing about gathering these, I think these are so smart and they're different from, I don't think, I don't know if Ironsworn did these as much, these little character um, uh, nubs that I have highlighted here to be like, hey, think about your character. It's perfect because this step, the truths come right before build your character. I think before it had character before truths. Definitely. I think it's good to build the world. No, it might've always been, it might've always been truths first character second, but like these help so much to make you think about your character before you get to that step. I'm, I'm totally into it. Okay. Yeah. We're saving those. Cause now I have like thoughts and ideas immediately before stepping into the character seat. Um, which is sometimes hard when you're just like going right into it. You need a world to, to put your feet on. And on top of needing these truths, having these questions about your truths directed at your character are just smart. Um, so life forms. We're ready for life forms now. Let's figure out what life forms are about. Roll the Oracle. 65. Right in the middle. Life forms. Many sites and planets are infested by dreadful forge spawn. These Aberrant creatures threaten to overrun other life in the galaxy. Interesting. The Forge Spawn are hostile creatures born of the chaotic energies of the galaxy. Hundreds of abandoned or devastated outposts and derelict ships stand as a testament to their dreadful power and cunning. A quest starter. A faction is said to be experimenting with Forge Spawn DNA to create a new biological superweapon. What are these dangerous tests being conducted? Interesting. I'm into this. I'm into it big time. Um, let's uh, let's let's do it. I'm sure some of the other ones are cool, but this one, this one doesn't initially fit in my head, but it doesn't not fit. So I can't say no to it. Like I can't. I mean, it's it's very much its own thing. So I'd like to see what could become of it potentially um so i'm keeping it i won't veto it i'll veto things that feel too off that don't feel right like i did the first time but this feels like it could it could fit i just don't know quite where yet it's an it's an interesting factoid that these things are a part of it and i'm sure we can find a way to put them into the world um the quest is interesting i don't know if i'll engage in that but if you have an expertise in life forms and planetary environments, you might be a naturalist. Probably not. If you are accompanied on your adventures by a native creature, they might be a companion such as a glow cat, void glider, rock horn, or symbiote. None of that really harkens to my character, I don't think. Um, perhaps that's why I'm chill with life forms being whatever. Um, I'm not thinking about that quite as much. And this just being dangerous? That's all I really need. <laughs> Danger, dangerous life forms on planets uh, mean action. And I have a very action-based character in mind. Kind of. Kind of. Um, he will when he will when he needs it. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to the precursors. Ooh, these are these are these are ones I'm excited for. I'm excited to see what we have here. So let's see who are the precursors of the forge in our version. Um, but how roll away 63 midway the ascendancy an advanced spacefaring empire once ruled the entirety of the forge vaults of inscrutable purpose are all that remain to mark the ascendancy's legacy but those places are untethered from our own reality i love this one i love that i have yet another faction name i have the triumphant i have the legion i have the ascendancy i love this shit um ascendancy vaults can appear spontaneously washed up like floatsome in the tides of time 
oh that's cool just like just a wave washes over of like of like fucking time magic shit and just just this huge fucking old vault appears their gravity and atmospheres pay no heed to natural laws some are corrupted and ruined others are unmarred and intact some are both at once they are chaos oh i'm into that i'm very into that oh that's so cool quest starter I'm, I'm, so they are chaos um as it says right there i'm almost like in cataclysm we got everything fell apart in an age of chaos i don't know if the ascendancy was the original religion i don't think so i think the, the precursors need to be somebody different from who you were in the cataclysm it needs to be somebody of the forge but I mean, we're we're very akin to chaos. So, uh, I mean, two hundred years removed, but uh, I imagine these precursors, whoever they are, I mean, because their vaults are chaos, it's pretty terrible. We want to avoid them. Um, quest starter deep in the forge, an ascendancy beacon has activated. The mysterious signal has confounded translation. Why are you sworn to seek out the source of the signal? what other person or faction opposes you interesting all the while our communication is very low <laughs> um this is this is becoming harder and harder to fit but I, i'm imagining information just comes slowly like really like i feel like you can still obviously there's still communication but i think it's just it isn't like we don't have the internet of space it's kind of like sectors share their own knowledge to some degree and it's still verbal knowledge but i think i think it will still be interesting like this could be a beacon we heard about much later on um it might be coming through on some old old tech that's extremely scarce i'm into it yeah that the 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 communication data is one i'm i'm worried about but i feel like we can we can stretch to make it fit some of the ones that you don't think will work will be the best ones in the end just not that one where not that one where there's no war i can't have it <laughs> it's too hard sometimes i just want to i just want to enjoy my 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 fantasy and not have to not have to stretch my creative muscles too too much I tend to strain them i feel like i would have run into a lot of trouble with that one i probably would have ended up breaking that truth very quickly um, it just wasn't wasn't what was in my head. So I'm into the precursors big time. The ascendancy, that's cool shit. I love it. Now comes the horrors. Here we go. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Nothing else. Nothing else to do other than to roll. Oh, I didn't roll the one thing or didn't read the one thing. We have to read it. Have you had any notable encounters with precursor vaults, relics, or tech? I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't particularly think my character would put themselves out there that much without very good reason, like money or tech, something, something they really want. If you are an expert in ancient lore, you might be an archivist. Probably not. If you pick the bones of these places, you might be a scavenger. Now that might that might be true. That might be true. Picking the bones of a place makes sense. Maybe maybe they do. So I could be wrong. Um, just that mention makes me think that maybe they, I've had encounters with them just for scavenging parts of the ship. I might have found my AI on one of these. Ooh, that's interesting. That my AI is an archivist AI. Uh, oh, what they call it? Ascendancy AI, I mean. Archivist, I just read that. That would be cool as fuck. I'm into it. Um, horrors. Let's do the let's do the next roll. The last the last truth, and then it's character time. Roll away. Oh, we got way low. Put enough alcohol in a spacer, and they'll tell you stories of ghost ships crewed by the vengeful undead. It's nonsense. Within the forge, space and time are as mutable and unstable as a flooding river. When reality can't be trusted, we are bound to encounter unsettling phenomenon. 
quest starter. You receive, you receive urgent distress calls from a ship stranded in the event horizon of a black hole. The ship itself is broken apart, a shattered hull, trailing debris. Trailing debris, there are no signs of life, and yet the ghostly messages persist. Oh, so I know this is supposed to be least scary version. I think it's the most scary because we all know that even even in the Iron Sworn Truce, when it comes to horrors, um, even the even the one that says there aren't any suggests there are. It's just like it's a different kind of way. I think in any game you have to have them to some degree, but having them be very subtle, very rare, very mysterious, very rumored, very like no one believes in that. It's better. It, it's it, I think it's better. I like I like that kind of uh, like we don't accept that, you know, it's this is happening um, kind of thing. I'm into it big time. Have you ever experienced supernatural encounters? I think so. I think so for sure. If you specialize in battling undead or monstrous forces, you might be a slayer. Probably not because I don't think our our thing works. If you have a supernatural connection to a spirit, you might be haunted. Possible. I don't think so, but I'm going to kind of put it in there. These are going to be good to save. Like I said, the quest board and these extras I'm putting in where I'm marking like possibilities like these could all be i'm just like kind of going through and making sure i know like paths that i possibly want for the future for this character <laughs> experience seems pretty chill to get in this one so those are those are all my truths let's cap it off let's go through everything just just the just the um just the bold text for cataclysm we have everything fell apart in an age of chaos for Exodus, we have mysterious alien gates provided instantaneous one-way passage to the forge. For communities, we have we have made our mark in this galaxy, but the energy storms we call bale fires threaten to undo that progress, leaving our communities isolated and vulnerable. That's so interesting because this now plays so well off the horrors thing because we're isolated, because we're vulnerable, because these bale fires like separating us there is a lot more like creep to the space we kind of living in a bit of a creepy star forge it's a little bit creepy iron the iron sworn bind their honor to iron blades i'm gonna say like blades made of old ships and shit like that's really common old ships are just other large objects made of iron like precursor vaults or derelict uh, sh uh ships or settlements like they're usually made of special special iron places. I'm also listening to Crying Sons, which has a bit of a creepy soundtrack at times, so I'm kind of feeling the creep here. Laws and governance vary across settled domains, but bounty hunters are given wide latitude to pursue their contracts. That's right, there's a hunter's guild as well. There's a few factions. I feel like we should write those down. Their authority is almost universally recognized and supersedes local laws. Let's let's actually do that really quick. Let me get a handout because I feel like these are going to be important uh, to know. Um, let's do factions and let's start with the Hunters Guild. Uh, Bounty Hunter Lawman. Um, I feel like it's just a good idea to have these listed because they're like they're hidden in my truths and I don't want to lose them. Um, so, yeah, we have the Hunters Guild in the in the laws which is interesting um i don't know that the ascendant the uh, ascendancy is a faction but i feel like it's still like something we should it's a name you know it is what the precursors were it's a group so i'm interested in it um religion three dominant religious orders the triumphant battled for influence and power within the forge so we're gonna write down the triumvirate the triumvirate Uh, three religious orders. Let's get that guy out. Cool, cool, cool. Pow. And then magic. Oh, yeah, we have the paragons, too. I'm just going to call this... Yeah, I guess it's like faction names. We'll just say faction names. I think it's the best thing, the best thing to do. 
Um, this is going to be the, let's call them Paragons. So for magic, we have supernatural powers are wielded by those rare people we call Paragons. Wielders of the supernatural. Communications and data. Much was lost when we came to the forge. It is a dark age. The knowledge that remains in the community. Just like, let me see, is there any factions here? No, 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 no. None here. Medicine. Oh, yes, we have rigors. Um, yep. To help offset a scarcity of medical supplies and knowledge, the technicians we call riggers create basic organ and limb replacements. So yeah, it is full replacements. Um, they are um, medical tech missions replacing limbs. Pow. Got it. And that's medicine. Artificial intelligence. Uh, for artificial intelligence, we we rolled a artificial consciousness emerged in the time before the exodus. And sentient machines live with us here in the forge. For war, we have those few with the ability to pay can call on the Legion, a guild of professional soldiers to defend or expand their holdings. The rest of us are on our own. So we have the Legion. Yeah, we got we got like a lot of roles with like so many different factions here. I don't know if like more had them or if we just got lucky with each one and got all the factions. <laughs> Um, lucky or unlucky, who knows? I like the factions. I, f I would say lucky. Um, uh, they are a uh, mercenaries for hire. Um, uh, we'll say mercenaries for hire. We don't need to. We know what they are. I just need like quick reminders. Life forms. Many sites and plants are infested by dread, dreadful forge spawn. The forge spawn are one too. They're all like names. Um, I wouldn't even call them faction names. I'm going to call it galaxy. For, I'll just call it forge names. The forge names. Uh, just, just because these are all like things you would know living in this universe. Um living in in the forge itself um less factions because some of them are factions for sure but some of them are also just like a people a type like paragons and riggers are just people um i don't know if they're a faction but the triumphant and hunter's guild and the legion those definitely are and then forge spawn are just these creatures so they're just these are just names but many sites and planets are infested by dreadful forge spawn these uh a aberrant uh creatures threaten to overrun other life in the galaxy i'm saying that right Aberrant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thread no so this is this is our our our, zo our zombos basically. Uh, I don't know what does the word aberrant mean. Let me just look it up really quick because that may be give me a, a definition. Because I'm imagining them just as like zombies departing from an accepted standard. Huh creature i imagine these are just like an alien creature more than anything i don't really know what they look like um dreadful life form that swarms planets um okay that was life forms precursors the ascendancy an advanced spacefaring empire once ruled the entirety of the forge vaults of inscrutable purpose are all that remain to mark the ascendancy's legacy but those places are untethered from our own reality so we have that one as well we definitely needed this list let's call them yeah the ascendancy um alien precursors to the forge let's call it that 
All right, and then finally we have Horrors. Put enough alcohol in a spacer, and they'll tell you stories of ghost ships crewed by vengeful undead. It's nonsense. Very cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah, these these will be good to have uh, up here just for names of, of what's going on and then all of this, all of this stuff. So we're moving on. We're we're advancing. Then we have we have a good 30 minutes uh, now to start our plunge into our character. Perhaps we'll we'll finish it all in one um, uh, for this episode. We'll see. But we also have to make a sector. So there'll still be plenty of of creation to be had here. So, oh, God. Space zombies, get me out of here. Um, let's uh, let's advance. So, creating your character, what you'll need. Don't worry, I have everything I need. My character scope. So here's some here is some some basics. So you are human or humanoid, I would say, because um, uh, you want to be based in a human in in a humanoid type um, in this in this world. But the game does give you sort of the ability to be a little more alien, be a little more non-human, um, robots, uh, uplifted animals. Um, you definitely have the opportunity to make that. It does, but it, uh, Starforge itself does not directly provide options. Um, I think we're going to be human for this, and then diversity and inclusiveness, um, obviously. Uh, any race, culture, disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity is something you can make a part of your character. Good shit. Um, and yeah, we're going to delve past this. Okay, here we go. Here's the character creation summary. We're going to ready our assets, choose two paths, create my backstory, write my background vow, board my starship choose my final asset and set my stats then i will set my condition tracks envision my character name them and gear up so we're going to do those in order look at this guy this guy's great love him so let's ready the asset card so we we have those already readied we have our we have our pile here uh over on the side so let's switch over all the decks I've I've imported, I've cut them out in Photoshop and threw them into uh, Roll20 to have access to. Um, luckily, I also have my quest board here where I've I've written down all of the all of the possible things I might want to take, and I already kind of starting to have a good idea of what I want that to be. Um, so those are all ready to go. We have our starship ready. I know that's one of our last uh, one of our last bits, but I just want to make sure that was out and locked in, ready to go. So um, we're going to we're going to choose two paths. Look through the path assets and choose any two. Consider how each choice plays into an emerging concept of your character. So the paths that definitely echo out the most to me. Hmm. The scoundrel one is really, is really good. <sighs> Bounty Hunter is good too. Outcast is also good. Outcast and scoundrel were really uh, hearkening to me. The augmented one though I love it, could be something for later. The veteran one was very close. The veteran one more than Scoundrel or Outcast. The mercenary, all of these are kind of secondary. I might just have to let those come later. Scavenger and Haunted are also kind of later. I think first and foremost out of all these, looking at them, veteran is big for the character that's in my head. So I think we need to grab veteran. I'm kind of, the other thing I really love about these is that I'm not looking at the stats of my abilities. I get to be surprised by what they are versus like just looking through the cards to see what bonuses are best. I'm kind of looking at the suggestions from my truths to just just telling me like hey if you're an experienced soldier you might be a veteran are you like don't think about what the stats are and what's on the card and if it's meta or if it's good just think about are you a veteran and it, i i like that i like that these came before uh as helpers to the decision so i definitely think veteran for sure so let's see if we can find veteran uh in the world's tiniest text um i definitely can read it though it is small but uh i should be able to find veteran 
Um, it is going to take me just a moment. There it is. So I don't even know what it is. Let's set it up and put it onto the map layer. Okay, I'm curious. I want to. I want to read it. I'm, I'm excited. What are my What are my powers and my abilities? Um, yeah, I definitely am imagining this individual as somebody who has faced and seen the horrors of war, and they are quite twisted by it. So, when I am in a fight, I increase my momentum reset by one. Ooh, so that's incentive already to use momentum burn. Uh, then if you burn momentum to improve your result, add plus one on your next move. So that's what I start with. That's nice. I like that. Um, I can advance to when I make a connection, add plus one. If you roll a match, you have history. I love this. I love this. Of course, it's I remember you from the war kind of thing. Um, on a strong hit with a match, you once fought beside them and they owe you a favor. I love that. This is great. This is exactly what you want from a path. The path itself, though mechanical, is pushing role play. Um, mark one tick on your Bonds legacy track and develop your relationship now. So on a miss with a match, you once fought against them. They hold a grudge. Ooh, oh no. Oh no, bro. <laughs> When you secure an advantage or gain ground by recounting or recalling a hard won lesson from your battlefield experiences, envision the memory and add plus one on a hit, uh, gain plus one momentum. Jeez, these work so well for veteran. Holy crap. These are, these are like, I'm always just so surprised how well thought out these are. This is a very well thought out one. I love, I love it. The other thing that I, I, I always want to stop myself from just going through and reading every path, every module, every ability. I did skim a few because I kind of wanted to know if like certain objects or um, items would be available to me in the future. Um, so some of them were, some of them weren't. But like, especially with the paths, I'm kind of trying to just keep myself from digging through everything because if I read it all, it's kind of spoiled, you know, it's it's not as it's not as fun. It's kind of interesting to just come across them naturally um, like I am here and not just read it all and kind of just just be done and be like, oh, Sean, give me new paths. I need new paths. I've read all my paths. This kind of like doesn't spoil the soup. You know what I mean? I haven't I'm, I'm not digging through the whole thing. Spoil the soup. What's wrong with me? I'm a dork. All right. So um, we have the veteran. The other path that I think my character follows. <sighs> Outcast is very close. Outcast, it's between Outcast and Scoundrel. Scoundrel is so... If I have connections with the criminal underworld, I might be a scoundrel. My god. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know if he's a soldier of... Like, he, he is a soldier of fortune to some degree, but I don't know if it's a mercenary grab there. I think he's less that than more of a scoundrel. Maybe I should test the scoundrel, see what it is, and see if it, like fits no no i just would go against what i was saying i would meta it i'd be like which one which one guys things i like more um outcast and scoundrel both feel similar so if you're exiled or reviled you might be an outcast outcast or scoundrel <sighs> yeah because everything else like agent um yeah if you're an expert at subverting or manipulating digital information systems you might be an agent i don't know that he is right now but it's a potential a lot of these are potential for the future like the weapon that i use is, is potentially something i can get down the line like i can easily start my adventure like because right now my first thought is and that's a really cool thing about assets is it's like, oh, but if I don't have the asset, I can't be a gunslinger. I can't have a gun if I don't have the asset. You absolutely can have a gun. Um, it's the same thing in Ironsworn where it's like, well, I can't have a horse unless I have the horse asset. So I need to get that. That's thinking far too mechanically. You can have a horse and use it narratively, but in no way will it impact the mechanics until you get the asset. So you can have a horse and then over time, use your experience to go, I think my bond with my horse is, you know, better. I think I've gotten better at using it. And that's going to influence the mechanics now of my bond with my horse and how we're able to fight together. Um, and they trust me more now I have the horse thing. It's the same thing with, like, getting any of these guns, these weapons um, being augmented. 
perhaps I've just been recent. My augmentation is something I've I've fought with. Maybe I have I have the mechanical arm that I want to have for my character, but I'm yet to be able to utilize it. So maybe that's something to experience in the future. Perhaps I meet somebody who furthers my augmentation. Perhaps I make friends with a rigger and they make my arm better and I get the augmented asset. God, I love this fucking game. Shit. <laughs> so good. Um, so it's between Scoundrel and Outcast. So I think we need to roll. I'm going to say because Outcast is on top in the order and Scoundrel's on bottom. Outcast is going to be 1 to 50 and Scoundrel's going to be... Let me think about it really quick because now I'm starting to lean towards Scoundrel and I don't want to make the roll and then back out on it. What fits more? Am I exiled and reviled or do I have connections to the criminal underworld? I'm leaning towards Scoundrel because the name fits. I don't think I'm going to roll. I just, I, I have to stop myself just because I thought to myself, 1 to 50 for Outcast. And the minute I said those words, I was like, God, I hope I don't roll 1 to 50. So that means I need Scoundrel. I don't even need to roll. My, I immediately had like a gut reaction of, please don't roll Outcast. Please roll Scoundrel. Sometimes I just want the roll to like, um, what's the word, um, to, to back me up, you know, to, to, uh, um, ah, dang it, not glorify. There's a word for it to, to, you know, like give me, give me back up on it to give me, to make me feel like, oh, I was validated validation. Yeah. That's what that was the word. Got it. Got it. I knew my brain would get there, um, to validate scoundrel, but I don't need to validate it. Scoundrels just what I think it is. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, it's Scoundrel whether I wanted it to be or not. Veteran and Scoundrel do without a doubt fit this so well. Where is my choose? Path available cards. There we go. All right. Start from the top and see if I can find There it is right there. Let's get it. Let's get it. And let's put it on the thing. And let's see. Let's see what it does. Ooh, it comes with a little die, a little dice. When making a move by lying, bluffing, stealing, or cheating, fuck, this does fit, at plus one, on a strong hit with a match, your deception creates an unexpected opportunity. Take the value of your shadow as plus momentum. I didn't even think about that. I'm going to have to put some points into shadow for this guy. He's going to be like iron and shadow. I don't know if he is going to be... Yeah. The only problem with it being iron is I have to be close range. He would be close range. He would he wouldn't be exactly like melee, but he would be even with a gun, he'd be close range, punching somebody and then shooting them. <laughs> so it'd be the same it would be the same thing. Um let's just see, yeah, I want to see what the other things are um that I'll be getting for the future. When you make a connection to search out a new contract, you may roll plus shadow. Oh, Oh, that's good. That's good. I like this. This is this is going to help me get quests. Uh, if you do reroll any dice on a miss and envision how your reputation or underworld contacts lead you to a disreputable connection. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me read this again. Yeah. When you make a connection, to search on a new co oh contact, not contract. Sorry, contact. I can roll plus shadow. If I do reroll any dice on a miss to envision, um. We're only dice in a miss and envision how your reputation or underworld context leads you to a disreputable connection. Okay, interesting. <laughs> so this is how I can make bad guy connections. And the third, when you make a quick escape or con your way out of a situation and burn momentum to gain a strong hit, take plus one momentum after you reset. If you envision how this momentary success leaves you fated for future trouble, mark two ticks on your quest's legacy track. Wait, I have to reread that one more time. Um, so yeah, when you try to make a quick escape or con or whatever, uh, get out of a bad situation um, that you got yourself into, um, you can burn momentum and take plus one momentum after the reset. But if you envision how this momentary success leaves you faded for future trouble, mark two ticks on your quest. Ooh, so it's it's built in to like have the the natural scoundrel lifestyle of like you get out of something bad, but the bad will always follow you. I love it. I love it. Did we get a uh, one of these? One of these here. Let me just see. 
Where was veteran? Was veteran anyone here? Veteran healer was on here. So these are like the suggested ones. Let me go over. It's pretty cool. Where they would they'd suggest you two assets and then you'd be something from that. They're just suggestions and they don't cover everything. Obviously, that would be a much longer list for how many assets there are, how many paths there are. That is, um, there's like more than thirty. So. Very cool. I don't think I did get any of the... What this makes me, more than anything, I don't know. Makes me a veteran scoundrel is what it does. <laughs> makes me a bastard. Um, who had who was once, you know, someone honorable, but not, not really anymore. Create your backstory. Okay, interesting. So as you begin to play in Starforged, your character is a person with few ties to others. Yes, that makes sense. The Forge is a vast galaxy and your former home, uh, if you had one, is lost. Wait a minute. The Forge is a vast galaxy and your former home, if you had one, is lost to you now, forsaken by you or a distant memory. Consider what happened to sunder or separate you from your home and relationships. This is your backstory. Uh, this origin can influence the stories you explore and vows you undertake as you play Starforged, or it might just provide some texture to help bring your character to life. Keep it simple. There's no need to invent an elaborate history. Yeah. You can discover more about your character through, through play. I love that. That's perfect. So backstory prompts. I'm kind of just interested in rolling and seeing what it is, because even though I've definitely thought of this character, their backstory doesn't really. And I've played this character before in a few games. Their backstory really hasn't come into into play too much for me. It hasn't really been. I, I've thought about it a little bit. Definitely the veteran was part of the backstory that I that I thought about for them. Um, let's make this let's make this like gray so it's somewhat visible no maybe darker gray there we go now that's visible across anything um perfect color let's let's just see what we get and like see how that's going to influence us 45 you have no memory of your former life i hate how much this fits i hate it i hate it, it i lo hate it and i love it um I definitely think that they were a member of, so I think I have ties to the Legion because that is, that is the main force over the last 200 years here that has been used. The main mercenary force used for war, for war. I think the triumphant has their own armies, but they are never large enough to wage war like the Legion. And I think I have history with the legion itself i think i have history with the legion and before that i don't know i think i think the legion saved me i think they picked me up out of space maybe when i was young and that's where i uh that's where i that's where i am i have no memory of my former life shit dude um building a i'm, I'm just gonna copy that really quick I'm just going to put it in my notes. The Legion saved me from the void. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That makes sense. And that's why I'm a veteran. Because I, I think I remember being a veteran. I think the veteran is definitely part of my history. But before that, before my time with the Legion, I don't recall. Very cool. That's as far as we need to go. So let's actually label that. Backstory. Now, I know that that's like probably the biggest cop out. One that is that is uh, that is seen. Um, I'll just call it BG background. <sighs> but like, cause it, you know, if if you if you started a D and D campaign, oh geez, my crying sons restart. We started a D and D campaign, and I had a player go, I don't remember my my. I have no memory of my former life. I'd be like, oh, somebody didn't somebody didn't come prepared. <laughs> but I think we can make it work here. We rolled it. We rolled it, and it kind of fits this character and how I how I originally created them. They had background, but I hadn't really gone further back. And a memory loss actually fits this character a bit because they are a bit broken in the head 
just a little bit messed up. They're not quite right. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll dig into that more. Um, write your background vow. Next, you'll envision and mark down a background vow to represent a primary motivation or ultimate goal. I want you to envision the vow, um, background vow, write the vow. Can't think of one. Okay, so this is one. This is probably one of the hardest ones for a lot of people is to is to imagine their background vow and like what that is. And I'm hmm i'm i don't know that i completely know what my background is either but one of the things it says here is can't think of one if you're having trouble coming up with a background vow try rolling on some oracle tables for inspiration actually that's a really good idea um but it also says you can leave it blank and add it when something occurs during play i'll um i'll toss down some oracles I think I'll be interested in, I think I'd be interested in knowing we, we kind of have built this world and I feel like something's going to influence off of that quite easily, uh, to what it is we think our background vow is. So let's actually go in and do the core oracles of action and theme. Let's do it. Roll away. Roll dice. Oracle. 72, 72, 72, 72, raid, okay, theme is going to be, so we have raid, and then our theme, the second part is going to be labor, labor, raid, labor. Huh. Raid labor. Let me roll one more time. Well, let's let's not roll one more time. Let's go up and down here. Knowledge, language. Raid knowledge. Background vow. Huh. What's the back what's the back and forth on raid? Let me see. Mm, what was it? What was it 72? It's always good. So something to do if it, if it doesn't look look right. Look at up and down. So raid protect reduce. Re or protect. Oh wait, what does it say? Protect or reduce? Protect knowledge. Protect knowledge is pretty good. Let me let me just. So we have for the first one we have. So it could be protect. Um, raid, let me just put some things in here. Protect, raid, or reduce. That's for the, that's for the first one. And then the second one, which we rolled a straight 50, we have knowledge, uh, labor, and language. Protect, raid, reduce. It could be protect knowledge, protect labor, protect language. I feel like protect knowledge makes the most sense there. Raid knowledge, raid labor, raid language. Raid doesn't fit. Reduce, no, reduce knowledge. Reduce knowledge. My background goal is to forget more. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, I don't know that that would, uh, that, that's like kind of interesting to the character a little bit. Reduce labor. It would be interesting to, be, but I feel like that's such like a hero thing, like, like make it so people don't have to work so hard. I don't know that the, my character would care too much about that. Protecting knowledge in a background vow. Hmm. Maybe something he learned in the forge that he doesn't want to to come out. Information he wants to to make sure remains. Um unknown huh interesting my background vow let's keep it vague i've learned something i'm not doing the voice yet but i've learned something in the hmm or maybe it has to do with like the one Protect knowledge. Oh. Interesting. I'm afraid of what my 
unknown past has to tell me. I fear I forget for good reason. Um, I'm afraid of what my lost. I'll just say I'm afraid of my lost past. And I'm going to put these in parentheses. Protect knowledge. I'm afraid of my lost past. I fear I forget for good reason. Mm. Protect the knowledge. Maybe I want to know. I mean, that seems that seems like the most basic. Yeah, maybe I want to know what it what it is I've forgotten. Um, I want to know my lost past. I think I forgot for good reason. I'll just leave that like that because I don't have a lot of room to type here, but I think, I think what the background vow is. So let's, I need to discover my lost past so I can protect it. Uh, my lost, I need to discover lost info I have. I don't even know. It's not like it. It's hard to like phrase this in such a short thing because I don't have a lot of space. Um, I think something important is trapped in my head. <laughs> I need to get it out. Get it out. I actually like that. Let's let's do that and just reduce the size a little bit. Yeah, I think something important is trapped in my head. I need to get it out. <laughs> I actually like that. That's a good background vow. I don't because yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely an, an epic vow. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be solving that anytime soon, but something is something is locked in that in that past. I have no memory of my former life. The Legion saved me from the void. Um, perhaps there was some kind of ancient knowledge, something precursor, something, something maybe from the cataclysm religion. Like I know that I was saying before that I had that iron sword from an Exodus ship. Um, was it the Legion that I was with? Um, maybe it's not an ex, maybe it is an Exodus ship. Maybe the Legion, le the Legion, though not particularly religious, um, still adheres, uh, adheres, um, I don't know if that's the right word, still adheres to the sort of ancient exodus. And, uh, I think, I think that makes sense. I don't know that I'm, I'm immediately marked for some form of religion. Maybe I am, and I don't know. Maybe I have the sword, and I don't know it's from an exodus ship. Ooh, am I old? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know this. <laughs> let's specify i don't know this i don't actually have my character doesn't have this information but my sword my iron sword maybe it was something that was with me it's it's from the exodus one of the exodus ships how i got it we don't know um that's cool shit all right so we have the background vowel that's done i like the order that we're doing things in it feels like it's different oh Let's um let's go back into launching campaigns. Let's sh close our oracles um, and go into the next part of create your character, which is going to be we're on start. Uh, we're going to be board our starship, which we're going to save for next time since we are coming so close to the end. Um, very very cool. We're pumping out a few episodes of this. This is uh this is good shit. Uh, I will uh, I will return uh, shortly with the next episode as we step onto our starship and see what it is we're going to be flying the skies with.
uh, very cool. I will see you next time. Bye.